All right, we got a guy out there saying, if you rent your property to Section 8, you just made a big old mistake. Maybe the worst mistake of your life. What do you guys think? Is investing in Section 8 properties going to be the worst mistake of your life? Let's talk. All right, y'all, welcome to the show. Answering your real estate questions and comments and things of that nature. We got this dude, Smoker. Obviously, there's going to be nothing but intelligent conversation coming from my man, Smoker. All right. He was commenting on a video uh, and another question that someone was asking about their first time running to Section 8. They were a Section 8 virgin, okay? Uh, we'll link that video uh, at the end of this or in the notes or something like that if y'all want to watch that video. But it, you know, we were discussing some of the things you need to know if you're a Section 8 virgin. And uh, his opinion, Smoker's opinion, is that you just made a big mistake, maybe the worst mistake of your life. He is saying that investing in Section 8 rental properties is the worst mistake of your life. He's saying Section 8 tenants are the worst. Section 8 tenants are bad. Section 8 tenants are deplorable. Section 8 tenants are crappy people. And you know what? I got to say... By and large, I do agree with some of those sentiments, all right? By and large, Section 8 tenants, irresponsible. By and large, Section 8 tenants will jack up your house. They are doing some deplorable stuff to landlords, okay? That is all true, brother. That is true. Section 8 people, they don't have the same mindset is other people. Now, I know we're going to get some wokies and some liberals out there like, how could you say that? Being on Section 8 doesn't define the person. All right, we, yes, it does, okay? It's not like I'm saying people with long hair or people with short hair. I'm talking about something that truly does define who you are. Being on Section 8 in in and of itself is proving that you are too irresponsible to pay for the roof over your head. All right, if you can't pay for your own roof, all right, you're an irresponsible person. That is true. That is just a true fact. As true as the grass is green, the sky is blue, and water is wet, that's just a fact. However, this is where I diverge from Smoker here, okay? I agree that they're tough folks, and I agree that they do a lot of damage to landlords' properties, but, brother, i tell you what, before I started investing in Section 8 real estate, I was managing a Radio Shack, making $30,000 a year, living in an $85,000 house. Today, I talk to you as a multimillionaire who's living in a mansion with an 11-car garage. And you know how I made all of my money, brother? I made it through the Section 8 program. I made all that money investing in Section 8. I've done over $200 million worth of Section 8 real estate deals and other types of deals similar to that. Not all of those deals were specifically Section 8, but the majority, or pretty much almost all of it, is like in the Section 8-type neighborhoods, the low-income, the small, cheap cash cash flow investing, other voucher programs. You know, it's all very similar stuff. So how can I agree with you that all the bad shit that y'all think Section 8 tenants do happens, but also how did I make that bag, bro? They, these are the real questions. And I guess the answer in its simplest form would be you got to know what you're doing to play the game, okay? Those bad things are going to happen, you can do certain things to mitigate your risks and avoid a higher than absolutely necessary frequency of the Section 8 tenants doing bad stuff to you guys. Um, but you have to learn first how to mitigate that stuff and then secondly learn how to underwrite that bad behavior into your overall business model. Like as an example, like it would be a huge mistake if you were to buy like, say you go to like Detroit and you buy, you decide you're going to buy yourself a bunch of three, four hundred thousand dollar new construction little McMansions, okay? You go in there, you buy them, those are going to attract like an above average quality tenant. So then if you go ahead and take those houses and slap a bunch of Section 8 tenants in there, yeah, that'd probably be the biggest mistake of your life like this dude is saying, okay? If you're paying for an asset, an expensive asset like that, you're paying for that quality of asset, that quality of asset's going to come with a lower price-to-rent ratio, but it's also going to come with a tenant base 
that is a much lower risk to you, the landlord. So throwing a high-risk tenant like a Section 8 tenant in that property, yeah, those kind of deals, yeah, that'd be you making huge mistakes. However, you got to underwrite that kind of stuff into, into your business, okay? If you look at like another city, right, another place, and you're like, okay, instead of buying these three $400,000 houses, maybe I'll buy... You know, instead of buying four four hundred thousand dollar houses, maybe I'll buy fifteen forty thousand dollar houses, fifteen sixty thousand dollar houses. I can buy forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollar houses and still get eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars a month in rent. What? Yeah, price to rent ratios through the roof. Why? Because there's going to be an additional level of risk. What's that additional level of risk? You ask. Well, those properties that are that cheap that are renting for that much they're going to be in tough neighborhoods high crime neighborhoods and they're going to attack the tenant base attract the tenant base that is very flaky and high risk when you're in there though you go you grab yourself some section 8 tenants because some section 8 tenants when you're in a high risk neighborhood high risk area high risk investment class like that your section 8 tenants they're going to still be able to get you that 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 1500 a month every single month without a lot of risk because the government's paying for it. Are those people going to live in your house and treat it really, really well? No, probably not. No. As a matter of fact, the majority of them are going to fuck your house right up, just like our guy Smoker's thinking. But it's all about the numbers, y'all. It's all about math. Think about it, right? If I could buy a house for 60K, right? And, you know, on that $60,000 house, dude, I'm getting like $1,300 a month in rent, right? What's my mortgage? Five, six hundred, okay? You get 1300 bucks or so in rent, right? So you're making like six, seven hundred bucks a month more on rent than your mortgage, taxes, insurance. That's a big old spread. That's like a spread of like seven, eight K for the year. And then let's say that tenant they live in your house for like 10 years because your Section 8 tenants do tend to stay a lot longer uh, than your cash paying tenants in these rough neighborhoods. But like, let's just say they stayed 10 years. Now we got like a gap of like 70, 80 K, right? You made 70, $80,000 more than your taxes, your mortgage, your insurance, right? And then they move out of your house and you realize, shit, they did $20,000 of damage. But don't freak out, bro. If you know what math is, right? You're like, okay, well, I still had a spread of like 70, 80. And then they did like 20K worth of damage, right? Think about it, guys. You had a spread of 70, 80. They do 20K worth of damage. Who's still winning in the long run? Not to mention it's 10 years later. This is real estate, y'all. They don't make new land, okay? Pretty much anywhere you go, if you buy a house, right? In 10 years, that house is going to be worth more money than when you bought it, right? So you got that 70, 80K gap of revenue over expense. Then you get your expenses, they catch up to you, pay them. So now your 70, 80K gap is down to like 50, 60K. But guess what? Your 60K property is now worth 90K, right? You're back up to the 80, now maybe even 90K range, right? Now, do that, multiply that out by 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 200, 400, 700 houses. You could understand how a guy could go in to the business with eyes wide open, realize, yeah, I'm going to deal with a lot of messed up tenants, but you could still end up making a freaking bag, okay? That, folks, is why no. Investing in Section 8 real estate does not have to be the biggest mistake of your life. Can it be if you do it wrong? Yes, but if you do it right, you're going to make a freaking bag. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.